Which door? Which door, Rex? This door. The Mount Mansfield door. The lodge. And where it is finally starting to snow here. There's been snow on the radar for an hour and a half. We've had Virga. Virga being precipitation that comes out of the cloud and evaporates because the air below the cloud is pretty dry. So you have to saturate that layer and it just happens. So this is day four in a row with New England snow. Got the groomers up there on gondolier. Not expecting a lot of snow here today. We have a occluded storm in northern Michigan. Occluded meaning it's done its job. It's mixed the cold air south and the warm air north and it's uh, going to spawn a new low at the triple point where the purple line, the occluded line, meets the blue line and the red line. We call that a triple point. And you get a new storm developing. This morning it was only 1,007 millibar low over the mid-Atlantic. And it's going to strengthen cyclogenesis as it heads north. And the temperatures this morning started off at around 11 degrees in Brownville, Maine. And 45 degrees in Rochester, New York. Yeah, that's a bit of a front there. That's a warm front. I know I promise more cold fronts than warm fronts. There is a cold front though too. <laughs> a couple of them that are gonna come down over the next 24 hours. So the warmer air is lighter, less dense, and it rides up over the top of the colder, and that's where you get precipitation. Rising air cools and condenses and makes these snowflakes. And looks like the air is kind of drifting in from the north now, coming down out of Smuggler's Notch that's up there. And Route 108, and so you have colder air below the warmer air, and that's usually a good setup for snow, but the energy is going to be jumping to the coast of Maine, and it's really Maine that's going to get the most snow today. We're going to get this little band of snow that showed up on the radar this morning. It's really shrinking. It's a real stretched out storm from northern Michigan, full latitude trough with precipitation all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. There was a severe weather outbreak yesterday, Kentucky and Tennessee. And that southern energy is going to be cut off now. So it's really the new low that's forming this afternoon. Uh, there's the surface map for 2 o'clock this afternoon. And blue is snow. Orange is mixed precipitation. Snow and sleet is possible probably somewhere around Concord, New Hampshire, Portland, Maine. And that's right where the heaviest precipitation is going to be today. So national advisories, watches, and warnings. There's one tiny winter storm warning in northern Michigan. Otherwise, uh, just some winter weather advisories here in the Northeast. So be advised, it's wintry weather. <laughs> also be advised that the long range guidance has capitulated to the Euro. So we're gonna be using the Euro after I go skiing. We're gonna look at the Euro, which has many days in a row of snow. Today's day four in a row. And it's gonna snow off and on pretty much all week up here. But then that big end of March storm, April Fool's storm, does look like it's gonna end up being more wet than white, unless something dramatic changes between now and the time I go skiing, which is, I'm going skiing right this second. And we'll come back out and finish this right in uh, now. Now is 11 o'clock on this very dynamic day. Look at the size of this storm. Stretches from southern Canada right across New England to a huge batch of thunderstorms in Louisiana. But it's being sheared out. It's being stretched. Uh, so we have a new storm forming south of Cape Cod, and it is a dark day. It feels like middle of winter, not the first week of spring. It's such a thick cloud over us, and we've had every kind of precipitation so far today. We've had some fat flakes, we've had some liquid drizzle, and now it looks like we've got some very small snowflakes. And I think this is the beginning of the transition from the occluded air, where it warmed up this morning, back into colder air aloft. And we're going to end up with inches of snow around here, but it's a highly localized effect. You can see it accumulating a little bit on the side of the road there, and the cars are white over in the parking lot way over there. The, the ground has turned white, but it's sort of dust on crust. But uh, if you get enough thick enough dust, like uh, several inches, then you end up with powder skiing, and it's going to be close. But for most of New England, it's a fairly wet day from about Concord, New Hampshire, and points south as a new low is forming. So let's go to the midday. Uh, well, one more thing, the temperature on Mount Washington, this morning I said it was a Virga storm. The temperature on Mount Washington was 16 when I was talking then, and now it's down to 10. So what happened was the 
the air became saturated, the dew point came up, the temperature went down. So it is cold up in the sky, 10 degrees on top of Mount Washington, and uh, may get a little warmer on the east side of this storm before it gets colder again. So here's the high res. I waited for it to just come out and hot off the press here. Uh, the, uh, the 3K NAM, and there is a storm ramping up, cyclogenesis again. It won't be as windy on the backside, though, uh, uh, with the storm developing over Boston. And there's your heavy rain in eastern Massachusetts and snow in Maine and snow showers up our way in Vermont and New York. And this evening, a line of thunderstorms forming just south of Cape Cod. Wow, that's some serious convection, but that's mostly over the ocean. At that time, the new low was taking off out of eastern Maine, leaving a plowable snowfall there uh, from... Bangor to Holton and points south to Eastport, Maine. It's a full-on snowstorm this evening. And then what happens is uh, the old low from the northern Great Lakes is only going to slowly pass right over and north of Vermont. Tomorrow we have these blue blobs, snow showers, rain showers at lower elevations, but the upper levels are getting colder and colder and it's an upper level low, very unstable. You know, I call that low barometer cold. So even away from the mountains, you may get some showers of grapple or some snow as the freezing level is going to come down tomorrow. And then uh, you get into Wednesday, there's a low just missing us to the south and east. When we look at the euro, though, it's going to be a different story in a few minutes. And more snow showers. And you see those darker blues. Those darker blues indicate uh, heavy snow showers or even some snow squalls. But it doesn't look that windy, though. That's the good news on the backside of this cyclogenesis. We don't have a strong high coming in. We've got the, uh, a meandering low, so that's going to keep us from getting very windy. Uh, it did get fairly windy up here from the southeast earlier, but I think that wind is probably diminishing. Uh, skiing was pretty fun. Uh, it snowed really hard. This is what it looked like for a few minutes there, right about 8 o'clock or so. And I did take the lookout, and I did the top of uh, Hayride. They do a really good groom job here. So uh, definitely groomers today. The woods are, are still pretty icy and we don't have enough snow covering up the woods yet, but we're going to work on that over the next several days. Uh, here's uh, now the GFS is uh, in the doghouse. So no, I'm just used to saying here's the GFS, but we're not going to use it anymore because over the last oh, four or five days, there's been a competition between the Euro, which has been insistent, consistently showing low pressure passing to our north to close out March and April Fool's Day. And if that happened, I said it would be really warm, and I was choosing the GFS because I'd had a more southern track. But now, in the last two days in a row, the GFS has capitulated to the Euro. So for consistency's sake, we're going to go to the Euro model. So it's back out of the doghouse after I look at these two crows, because you know I love crows. <laughs> and there's nosedive in the background. We can't access nosedive, although there's somebody there right now. Must have hiked because uh, the Forerunner is out for maintenance now. Uh, week three. Uh, without the forerunner, and uh, any given Sunday, that forerunner may come back into service. Okay, so let's go to the Euro now, ECMWF from Pivotal Weather. It's last night's run, and here we go. Uh, there's the storm developing right over New England and taking off, and all that rain to the south is going to stay south for now, and we have an upper level low right over us with scattered snow showers that low to our north. Uh, means it's unstable, colder up in the sky than down near the ground. So in southern New England, where the sun comes out, you can still be 50, even as it's snowing a little bit up here. And then uh, where is, oh, there's that Wednesday system just clipping southeastern Massachusetts. It says it tries to snow a little bit in Boston. Our NAM did not say that. So, But there's a chance of some mixed precip in southeastern New England Wednesday. And then uh, we have low pressure to our north. And that low to the north is a lot farther north than we were hoping for. The front barely gets through here on Thursday. Some more snow showers are scattered around, not too windy. And then the Arctic air is pressing into southeastern Canada. Meantime, real warm air is coming across much of the central and eastern United States. And there's a battle royale going on between the warm trying to override the cold. And initially on Friday, not much going on. Saturday, there is more rain, snow, and sleet developing. Look at all those different colors. Blue is snow, and uh, the red is uh, and purple is freezing rain and sleet. 
And that whole boundary is right across central New England. And it looks like we're on the snowy side in northern Vermont through about Saturday night, Sunday. Here comes the warm front. And that low ultimately is to our north on Sunday night and Monday with warmer air, maybe even 70 degrees in southern New England, even as rain is going back to snow here. Monday afternoon as the low, new low develops on the front. We've seen that so many times. And that low is trying to bring snow back up into northern New England on Monday into Monday night. And Tuesday is April Fool's Day, and there is high pressure building to our north, so we will have cold air advection. We'll be on the colder side of the front initially on Tuesday, and then if we take it out 240 hours, that's the end as far as we go. 10 days is now 8 p.m. on Wednesday, April 2nd, and we are just barely on the colder side of the front. But you see the red line with the 570. That is some serious warm to hot to record hot weather coming toward the northeast here. And that probably will be the end of the current cold wave we are experiencing uh, for the most part, except for next Sunday, except for this Sunday, we're going to be on the colder side of the wave through about uh, April Fool's Day. But it will include some rain here. But if we go to the coast to coast snowfall. I think this is week 23 in a row of coast to coast snow in North America. And once you get into the purple, that's about six inches of snow. You can kind of see a crisscross forming here in the Northeast with the nexus of heaviest snow uh, somewhere around Lake Huron or somewhere in there, somewhere between Northern uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, and into Southeastern Canada. And uh, as we go to day 10, it's the end right there. And you can kind of make out those two different lines, one from northwest to southeast, cutting right across New England, and the other one from southwest uh, to northeast. And that little X, and there's kind of a gap in between. But parts of New England are going to get 6 to 10 inches of snow with rain on top here on Sunday is the way it looks. So I'm going to be here most of the week. So we'll be enjoying this view for the most part and be able to call the play-by-play -play on this late season snow, a little snow on the roof right there. So day four in a row of New England snow uh, for our and more. Uh, Josh Worth shared some bluebird shots from J Peak where he had found some powder skiing and sunshine yesterday. And I was in southern New England and watching. Uh, let's see, I've already kind of forgot. Well, mostly just the trip uh, uh, north and uh, uh, the wind yesterday, again, was way overdone. It was way windier than I thought it was going to be. All right, so here's and more from yesterday, uh, the ride from Weymouth to Vermont. And, well, I didn't, uh, I saw the sunset in New Hampshire. That was the end of the day right there, sunset. Ski gondolier this morning, great groomers. All right, talk to you again in 24 hours. Rabbits don't seem to bother the daffodils and narcissists, whatever these are. I see a lot of people already have yellow flowers, and when I get back, I don't know, it's a pretty cold week. May or may not have yellow flowers. Hyacinth. Sunday. Beauty. <laughs> pretty, pretty cold. I did get above 40, though. Haven't had a day this cold in a couple of weeks. Watered the seed. Yep. Yeah. Garden hoses out. Trying to save some of the tulips out front using some of this. Very expensive, 37 bucks for that. Deer and rabbit repellent. Liquid fence. And the ice bucket still shows some ice. So it's probably harden up again. All right, so I got about a half inch of ice. Let's see if there's any left when I get back at the end of the week or if this bucket doesn't runneth over. Everyone else is heading south, I'm heading north. Five o'clock, 46 degrees, late start. <laughs> so there's not gonna be much in more today. There's no moon rise to see, just a sunset. Wait for that, just in Quincy now. Massachusetts, that is. Yeah, so pretty. I see a rainbow. <laughs> Some clouds on the horizon. Weather systems are coming in fast and furious, aren't they? We're chasing. T-Rex, we're chasing. He doesn't like the car. Sky waves in London, Derry. Not in a hurry Sunday. <laughs> Cruise control at about 75 and I'm the slowest one. On your in more Monday. Almost to sunset. 
first year out of college, lived in Manchester, New Hampshire. You would think I would know the name of that body of water. <laughs> it's the first time we've gone around this corner of this season where that's not ice. I wonder if it'll refreeze this week. Still almost to sunset. Another body of water that was ice, just south of the Hookset rest area. All right, Rex, you can go for a little walk. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> or picnic tables go to decay. I think there's some useful junk in here. Kind of loving those stairs right there. That. Oh yeah. Stuff. Steel pipes. Let's take up that Alberta spruce. Huh. All right, Rex. Let's keep moving. Where'd you go? Yeah. Last of the snow bank right there. That was ice like a couple days ago. Probably be a skim of ice on it. <laughs> What's that, Rex? All right, let's go. Come on, we gotta chase sunset. We're not quite done with this video just yet. Yeah, maybe we are. Rex, stop. You're not walking home. This way. Come on. The stop is for you. All right, sunset. And this concludes our Not In A Hurry Sunday <laughs> from the rest area in Hookset, New Hampshire, where of course it's still windy and it's still cold air advection. And all the signs are saying, prepare for winter weather <laughs> on a Monday morning. The first Monday after the vernal equinox. Looking forward to it, chasing it. How much snow did we get this morning, T-Rex? And more from Sunday, March 23, on Monday, March 24.